how to add a visibility keyframe in the level sequence with C++ in Unreal. But actually, in today's video, we're going to do something a little bit different uh, compared to all the other videos that we did before. Because in all those videos, what we did is create all the different pieces of logic and then assembling them together. But today, we're really going to go through the whole flow when adding a keyframe in the level sequence. So we're really going to create the track if it doesn't exist, create the section, and then add the keyframe inside the section. And we're going to do the same thing when removing a keyframe. So let's get to it. But before we start, today's video is going to reuse some code we wrote in the video 22 of the series. So I recommend to go see that one. But if you don't want to, here is the code. So as usual, here we are in a completely empty header file, except the two functions we're going to create today. So one function to add a keyframe and one function to remove a keyframe. The first function is add visibility keyframe. That one we're going to feed it the path of the level sequence. To be able to add a keyframe in the level sequence, we need the level sequence, obviously. So we're going to feed it its path right here. The actor, which we want to either hide or set visible. So the actor that is already inside the level sequence, we're going to add the keyframe on top of that actor. The frame where we want to place the keyframe in the level sequence. And finally, the value we want to assigned to that flame. So a boolean right here telling us if we want to set the actor visible or hidden, obviously. So good. That was for the add visibility keyframe. We're going to add the keyframe onto that actor that is currently inside the level sequence. And then we have the second function, the remove visibility keyframe. That one, same thing. We have to feed it the path of the level sequence and the actor that has a visibility keyframe onto it. And also the frame number of the frame we want to delete. And then we're going to delete that keyframe from the actor that is inside the level sequence, obviously. So good. That's it for the header file. Now we're going to go inside the CPP. And as usual, we're going to start with the includes. And the first include today is going to be the code of the video 22, because we're going to reuse that code to find the actor that is inside the level sequence. And actually, you can also use that code to add the actor if it's not already there. In our case today, we're not going to add the actor inside the level sequence. We're going to make sure that it's already there. We're going to retrieve it and then add a keyframe onto it. But you'll be able to add the actor if you want to. So good. And then we also have those includes. These are all the includes that we need to be able to add the keyframe onto that actor. So first, we have the level sequence, movie scene, and movie scene section, which are pretty much the basic modules that you need if you want to modify the level sequence. And then we have the more specific include. So all the ones we need to add the visibility keyframe on the actor. So first the movie scene visibility track, because we're going to add a visibility track. And then inside that track, there is a movie scene bool section, because it's a boolean, either true or false, the actor is visible or not in the level. And then inside that section, we're going to use the movie scene channel proxy to retrieve the movie scene bool channel to be able to add the keyframe on top of that channel. So we're going to add the keyframe on the bool channel, which is inside the bool section, which is inside the visibility track, and obviously inside the movie scene section, the movie scene, and the level sequence. It's just a big old hierarchy right here. So good. All these includes are inside three modules. We have the level sequence, movie scene, and then the movie scene track. So we have to make sure that we are including all those modules inside the build.cs file. Otherwise, it's not going to compile. So let's go in the build.cs file. And right here, we have the level sequence. That's good. We have the movie scene and the movie scene tracks. Good. So we have everything we need. But if you don't have them, please add them. Otherwise, it's not going to compile. And you're going to comment that it's not working. So make sure to add all those modules right here in the build.cs file, and then it's going to work. Good. Let's go back in the CPP, and now it's time to focus on the first function, the add visibility keyframe. And as I said in the intro, since we're going to go through all the steps that are required to add the track, the section, and then the keyframe in the level sequence, it means that this function is going to be fairly long. So let's get to it. The first step to add the visibility keyframe in the level sequence is actually to remove the previous keyframe that was already there. So I'm going to call that other function that we have right here at the bottom, which was going to remove the keyframe that is already there in the level sequence on that actor and add that frame number. So if there's already a keyframe at that frame number, we're just going to delete it before adding a new keyframe at that location. Otherwise, it's just going to stack up a bunch of keyframe on top of each other, and that's going to cause a few issues in the level sequence. So let's make sure to remove the keyframe first. And now that that's done, well, we can start adding the keyframe inside the level sequence. The first step is to find the actor that is already in the level sequence. You can add your actor if you want to, but in my case, I'm just going to find the actor that we receive as input. So I have my actor right here. I'm going to call the get actor UID from level sequence, which is going to take that actor as input input and also the path of the level sequence and as output that function should return us the GUID of that actor which we're going to need to be able to interact with it because that's how the sequencer work if we want to do anything with all the objects that are inside the level sequence you have to go through the GUID so we have the GUID right here. If it's not valid, well, the actor is not inside the level sequence. I'm not going to be able to add a track a section or a keyframe onto it. So I'm just going to return right away if the actor is not already there. But if the actor is there, then we can start working for real. So the first step is going to be to well load the level sequence. So that's what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to do a static load object, uh, feeding it the class that I want. So the U level sequence class and also the path of my level sequence as output. My static load object is going to give me the level sequence object that we're going to use to add the keyframe 
frame in two. And since I have my level sequence right here, I'm going to take the time to calculate the text per frame that we're gonna use to know where we want to place the keyframe in the level sequence. So using the tick resolution and the display rate, it's going to give you the ticks per frame. So how many ticks there are per frame. And then you can multiply that by the frame number you receive as input right here. And that's going to give you the frame number where you want to place the keyframe in the level sequence. And you need that frame number to be able to place the keyframe exactly where you want. And actually, I think that's it for the prep stuff. I think we're ready to start doing real actions. And the first one is going to be to find the track that is inside the level sequence. So we have the U movie scene visibility track. That's the one we want to find. So I'm going to ask my level sequence to ask the movie scene to do a find track. The track that we want to find is the U movie scene visibility track, obviously. And we want to find that track on top of the actor that is already inside the level sequence. So the UID of my actor right here. So the level sequence is going to look inside that actor. Do you have that visibility track? Yes or no? If it has one, well, it's just going to return it to us. But if it's not there, well, I'm just going to create it because I want to add a keyframe onto it. If it's not there, I'm just going to create it myself. So here, if the visibility track is null, it means that the track doesn't exist and we have to create a new one. So that's what I'm going to do right here. Level sequence, movie scene, add track. So we're going to create a new track of type U movie scene visibility track. And we want to create that track on top of the actor, obviously. So we have to feed it the UID of the actor. As output, that's going to give you the track that was newly created in the level sequence on top of our actor. Good. So the track is done. Now that we have the track, we need the section because it's a big old hierarchy. So we have to go inside the section that is inside the track. So we're going to do the same thing right here. We're going to try to retrieve the bull section that is inside the visibility track. That's how it works. The visibility track should have a bull section inside it. So here I'm going to ask my visibility track to find or add a bull section. We're going to call this function because we want to find the track if it's already there or add a new one if it's not there. But in both cases, we want to retrieve a bull section at the end. So that function, that's exactly what it's going to do. It's going to look at that frame number in the level sequence. So where do you want your section to be in the level sequence? In our case, obviously, we want it to be at the place we want to add our keyframe. So we're going to use the frame number right here that we calculated just before right here. So we have the frame number. That's where the section should be. And then that function is going to look for that section at that location. If it finds it, it's going to return it to us. If it doesn't, well, it's just going to create a new one and give it to us also. And that little boolean right here is used to let us know if it actually created a new section or it simply found the section that was already there. So if it created a new section, it's obviously going to be true. If it didn't, well, the boolean is going to be false. But in any case, it's going to return you the bool section. Now that we have the bool section, though, I want to do a little something extra because if the section was newly added inside the track, there's something we want to do. We want to set the range of the section. So what is the length of the section? Because by default, it's just going to create a mini mini section that is zero frame length, actually probably one around that frame number. So it's just going to be a small, tiny little section right here. And that's not what we want. We want to have one big section that we'll be able to use for all our future keyframes if we want to add more than one keyframe, obviously. So what I'm going to do is simply if the section was newly added. So if we created a new section right here, I'm going to set the range of my section. So bool section set range. And the range I'm going to use is all the keyframes that are inside the level sequence. Obviously, you can decide the range that you want. You can make it start at the frame zero and end at the frame, let's say 100, 200, 500, doesn't really matter. But in my case, I don't really care about that and I want to keep it simple. So I'm just going to stretch my section all the way to the infinite. That's going to make sure that the section is always going to be available to us and we'll be able to add as many keyframes as we want in there. So good. Just make sure that the section is nice and pretty good. Okay, so I guess we're ready now. We have the track, we have the section. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit more right here. And then we're going to add the keyframe inside that section. But first we have to retrieve the channel because the keyframes are not actually inside the section directly. They are inside the channel that is inside that section. So I'm going to ask my section to get the channel proxy to get the channel that I want. The type of channel is obviously a movie scene, a bool channel right here. The index of the channel is going to be zero because because there's only one channel index for that type of section. So that's good. And as output, it's going to give you the bull channel. Yes, I have a channel. And now that I have a channel, I can finally add the keyframe onto it. And actually, I'm not going to add one key. I'm going to add a bunch of keyframes. Yeah, OK, that's just how it is. There's only an add keys function inside that type of channel. The movie scene bull channel only has an add keys function, not an add key function. So even though we only want to create one keyframe, we're just going to feed that keyframe, but inside an array. So that's why right here I have a few curly brackets. It's just because I want to convert my unique keyframe number inside an array of keyframe numbers. So that's just going to place it inside an array.
summary and same thing for my visibility right here. It's the value I want to assign to my keyframe number and it needs to be inside an array. So I'm just going to surround it by curly brackets and Unreal is going to convert it to an array for me. Doing that, we're simply going to feed two arrays of one element inside the add keys function and that function should be able to create the key for us. And actually that's about it. Now we just have to tell the track and the section to refresh themselves. So visibility track modify, both section modify, and that's going to refresh them. And now we can tell the user that it was a success. We were able to add a keyframe inside the level sequence. And now it's time to do the second function, the remove visibility keyframe right here. So I'm going to scroll all the way down and to remove the visibility keyframe, it's actually going to be pretty similar as adding a visibility keyframe because we still need to find the actor, the track, the section and the channel. So we're going to do all that one more time. So First, uh, find the actor that is inside the level sequence. So get actor UID from level sequence, feeding it the actor and the pad of my level sequence. And that's going to give you the UID. If the actor is not inside the level sequence, I cannot remove a visibility keyframe because, well, it's not there. So let's return right away. But then if we have the actor inside the level sequence, it's time to first load the level sequence right here because we're also going to need the tick per frame to determine the frame number where the keyframe should be in the level sequence and to be able to remove it, obviously. So here, static load object, uh, the static class is going to be the U level sequence and the path of my level sequence that's going to give me the level sequence which I'm going to use to calculate the text per frame and the frame number good so now all the prep stuff is done it's time to find the track in the level sequence so that's what I'm going to do right here level sequence movie scene find track the type of track is going to be the U movie scene visibility track and then we want to find it on the UID of my actor that I found inside the level sequence that's going to give us the track and the track should be on top of our actor so that's why right here I'm feeding it the UID if the visibility track is not valid well I cannot remove a keyframe from it because well it's not there so I'm just going to return right away also if the track is not there I cannot remove a keyframe so I'm just going to return right away and same thing for the section actually so here I'm going to try to find the section so visibility track find section at that frame number that's going to give you a generic section that I'm casting to a U movie scene bull section because that's the type of section that I want and that's going to give me a bull section if it finds one if it doesn't well I cannot remove the keyframe from it because well the section's not there so I'm just going to return right away also, if the actor is not there, we return. If the track is not there, we return. Same thing, if the section is not there, we return. Good. So now we know that all the pieces are there, it's time to remove the keyframe and it's actually not that simple. So I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit. And to remove a keyframe from a section, we actually have to first get the channel as before. So bull section, channel proxy, get the channel, movie scene, bull channel, index zero, that's going to give you the channel. And once we have the channel, we should be able to remove the keyframe. No, actually, no, that's not true. We have to do it in two steps. We have to first retrieve the keys that we want to delete and then tell the channel to delete those keys specifically. We cannot just tell the channel, okay, delete all the keys that are at that frame number. It's not how it works. So we have to do it in two steps. So first step, channel, get the keys. The range we want to use for that function, since we only want to delete the keyframes that are at that frame number, I'm just going to use the same frame number as start and end frame of our range. So let's say at the frame 50, we're going to take all the keys that are at the frame 50 to 50. So all the keys that are at the frame 50, and we're going to delete them. So here my range is just going to use the same frame number as start and as end and then as output is going to return you the times of the keys uh, that we're not going to use today and also the handles and that's what we're going to use to be able to delete the keyframe. So the two arrays that we have right here we're feeding it to the function and the function is going to populate those arrays using all the values of the keys that are at those frame numbers inside the channel. Okay so now we have all the keys actually the key handles and we can finally tell the channel okay delete those keys. Uh, those keys are obviously the key and those that we have right here and that's it now we can just tell the section to refresh itself so bull section modify that's going to refresh the section and then tell the user that we were able to delete all the keyframes that were at that location in the level sequence and now it's time to jump in unreal to see if it works so here we are in unreal and i'm a relatively empty well right here that i have right here i only have one warrior in there so that's my warrior right here and the warrior is also inside a level sequence that's a new level sequence that i created right here because that's one of the requirements of my function i want my actor to already be inside the level sequence before either adding or removing keyframe from it. So my wire is inside my level sequence and now we're ready to call our function which we're going to do by using a little user interface that we have right here. I'm going to show it to you real quick. So that's my user interface. I can feed it the path of my level sequence. So the level sequence that I just showed you, I can decide the visibility I want to apply to my keyframe with that little checkbox that I have right here. Then I can decide the frame number using the spin box that I have right here. So frame 0, 10, 20, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that when I click on add keys and remove keys, it's going to use that frame number to either set the visibility to true or false or remove the keyframe.
frame and if that's what we wanted to do and that's what it does in the graph right here so if i click on add key it's going to call the add visibility keyframe function which is created same thing for the remove visibility keyframe right here for both those functions i'm pinning in the path of my level sequence the warrior that is already inside my level sequence and inside my world obviously and also the frame number of the frame we want to either add a keyframe to it or remove the keyframe from it and finally for the add visibility keyframe we have to feed it the value we want to apply to that keyframe so in my case i'm going to use the value of my checkbox that is inside my user interface so let's go see if it works right now i don't have any keyframes in my level sequence so we can see that well it, it doesn't do anything because it doesn't have any keyframes but let's add a new keyframe to it so add a new keyframe okay my wire disappeared because my visibility is set to zero we can see that it created a new keyframe right here we can see that it also created a new section so that's the red line that we can see right here and we can see that the range of that section is really going way outside of the level sequence because the range is set to all the keyframes so infinite so this section is pretty much infinite right now this section is also inside a track that was just created on top of our actor so good everything seems to work now i'm just going to try to add a new keyframe to let's say the frame 24 add keys and now the warrior is back to visible because i added my keyframe to the frame 24 i can remove the keyframe Add the keyframe, remove the keyframe, add the keyframe. Okay, good, it seemed to work. Now let's see what happens if I add a bunch of other keyframes. So I'm going to add a hidden one, a visible one right here, another hidden, another visible, another hidden, I think, and finally one visible right here. Here we go. So now my wire should appear, disappear, appear, disappear, appear, disappear, because that's what I've sent my keyframes to do. So if I play my level sequence, now my wire should appear, disappear, appear, disappear, appear, disappear, and that's going to be it for today's video. So I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Yeah.